their state members. We do not speak their behalf. The following contains language in adult men and poorly impersonated celebrity voices. Listener discretion is advised. This is Gimp Pin Von Spookula, and you are listening to The Devil You Know with John H. Shaw and Dorian Gray. I might give them a couple of my bitches later on. Hail Satan. <laughs> Just cut me, Boca. 
Tammuz. Chaf. Tundrida. Taifan. Khatsin. Yen. Nur one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Circle of Snowflakes. I'm your host, John Shaw. <laughs> and, I, and I'm your co-host, Dorian Gray. Wait a minute. You dingy. Um, well, this is going to be fun. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what we got today, John? We've got a bunch of people, man, like a bunch. Uh, we've got with us right now Satanist. Hello. Oh, I'm okay. We just who just popped in? <laughs> Patrick DeMarco, oh, the voice of Christopher Walken on TDYK. We've got Robert Mosley, Robert Leifold, Nicole T- Tuberty, hello, Lorkin Black, Bonjour. and Keith Ecker. Howdy, howdy. So it's quite What's the crowd. Happening? Yeah, absolutely. Well, since we got a lot of people and we know that this is going to get interesting, let's just get into uh discussion right off the top with what the fuck is going on in the world right now we and got, begin vaginas marching down the street and we've got uh, uh people punching uh racists on interviews and madonna trying to burn down the white house and what's going on with the world it's all a little bit yeah. i think it's great i think it's freaking exciting I, I like vaginas on par- – oh, it's not a parade. It's a march. It's a vagina march, not a parade. My mistake. Right. I was all excited about a, a vagina parade. <laughs> parade. It been awesome to see the floats and to see, you know, <laughs> what kind of float vaginas would be going down the street. I'm thinking like a, a Macy's Day parade. But no, I have <laughs> a vagina march, that sounds that sounds pretty interesting. What are they marching for? Uh, are you high, living under a rock? Uh I work a little too much. They want, days, they so want cleaner know. vaginas. It's well, it's easy know, to see where they've been. You just follow the trail. There's just it's oh. like it's like it's like a trail of slugs. Oh boy. So it's like is it, oh I know like that living. I am not the only person who is tagged with the <laughs> Satanist walk in DC uh, video. I'm sure every single one of us had one of our friends send that stupid thing to us. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what? it's like going to the cannery. It's yeah. like going to the tuna cannery. You can smell it on the way there. Oh, boy. Well, you know, I was fortunate enough that uh, my friends know not to be stupid and put that shit on my wall because they know I'll tear their fucking head off. (laughs) (laughs) It's like I've planted enough to my friends to tell them, look, these guys aren't us, so they've learned. Oh, let's not put this on Rob Wall. Let's not piss him off today. He's in a good mood. <laughs> now, I, are, you, are, you, are you? I want to try to protect yeah, everyone real quick. Before Wait, anybody puts our, before anybody puts their foot in their mouth, I do want to say that uh, ha, the women, ha, ha, the, the women's ha, march ha. that happened, our own, our own Peggy Nadramia and her friends were part of the New York mm-hmm. Women's March. So, uh, just wanted to put that out there before. And start making fun of it. <laughs> no, we're waiting to see somebody put their foot in their mouth. Come yeah. on. <clears throat> I, I make fun of everything, so I don't really care. <laughs> I make I'm fun too of polite. Everything. I'm Canadian. Oh, okay. Well, listen, let me ask. Well, tell us what it's all about then. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, Dorian, go ahead with that. And I was going to ask uh, Nicole to maybe pipe in because she, she also has a vagina, you know, and I want to know how she feels about it. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> I think that uh, since we're on the subject, we need to we need to reference. Uh, Dorian, your voice changed. Yeah. <laughs> we need to reference Dave and Heather's film Vagina Time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that should have been the catchphrase for the whole weekend. Uh, you know, uh, um, obviously, uh, uh, a whole lot of women basically they wanted to make sure that. Um, I think they just wanted to make sure that their voice was heard and that uh, the uh, new officials that are going into office understand that uh, there's a whole lot of uh, female uh, watchers 
uh, that are out there and, and uh, they don't want to see uh, their rights maybe going in reverse. Um, so that's what the Mars is all about. But, you know, of course, you do, get... we, do we honestly believe that that Trump's administration is going to end women's right and it's going to turn back the clock on that? Are we really that? No. Is it got well, to that point or are we I can is help you with this a little bit? I, I, I think that you could try. I had a huge argument with my wife, Rachel, about this. Who the fuck is the this. dog? <laughs> I can't find my mute button. <laughs> but, oh, uh, it's Rachel Buddy? And I had a, we we, yeah, we had a huge argument about this because what the issue is, is Trump wants to defund Planned Parenthood. And Planned Parenthood does a lot of good for people, like my wife, who, you know, she has had abortions before and she's had the IUD inserted, uh, which is great for me. And without their services and the reduced cost, it would put a lot of women at risk and uh, not give them as many options. They'd have to pay either full price or have to have health insurance for those types of things. And what you end up with is a lot of young girls getting pregnant and then not being able to have an abortion or get a Plan B pill or, or any of those yeah. things. So it is a pretty serious issue. And we got in a big argument about it because I simply took a satanic point of view and I said, look, I didn't vote for Trump. I have nothing to do with this man, and there's nothing that we can do about it. And all I can tell you is that if he does defund Planned Parenthood and the time comes, I will have to just pony up the cash and take care of you. But she was pretty upset about, you know, she's thinking about her daughter. And she's thinking about all the other women out there that are going to be <coughs> stuck with this situation. I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. But well, it looks like that's the well, direction we're going. Well, let me say well, something real yeah. quick uh, that, um, about Robert. I'm I'm very glad that Rachel has gotten abortions. We don't need any more of you running around. But aside from that, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, buddy. But aside from that, um, they weren't <clears throat> mine. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I think abortion. If I got it, if I got it wrong, let me know. Abortion was the catalyst for all of this because it's a big, it's a big hot topic with him. But you know the thing with planned parenthood is, is it does a lot of great things not only for women but for men too it has you, you give you condoms yeah. and stuff but and then an std test and things like that so it's, and they it's, also it's, it's good. catch they manage to catch cancer before you know a lot of people oh, absolutely find out about it so i mean there's a lot that goes into it that i mean people, they'll check you for t testicular cancer or ovarian cancer they, they, they help out women i mean it's a fantastic organization and yeah. the thought that you know that, that they want to get rid of that, and it's all because of this abortion issue. And and every time I get in an argument with uh, one of my religious friends, it's always a hot topic uh, of, dis of discussion. And I just say, look, if you don't want an abortion, don't have one. If you don't want to be married to a gay person, then don't marry a gay person. And that's pretty much our all of our life philosophy, I believe. But other people out there that are trying to run this country, they want to run their lives, and they want to run everybody else's lives. Right. And yeah, this is another thing that I think. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Isn't it kind of one of the issue, one of the big issues? Isn't it when they're you've got these undercover people and they're filming and they're like buying and selling baby parts? Isn't that kind of a, a strange thing? Yeah. What? Well, that's what? what? Actually a rumor. Wait a minute. What? Yeah. I don't, what is that about? I didn't even hear about that. So I that. can I can help explain this because I've I've watched these documentaries about this very subject. So okay, the Robert the Mosley show, everyone. Sorry. No, the, the issue Just go is ahead, that uh, fetal tissue <clears throat> is very valuable for testing for stem cell research. So <laughs> there was an accusation that Planned Parenthood was encouraging girls to get abortions so that they could farm the fetuses to sell for profit. And yeah. they sent some undercover agents in with cameras and recorders and uh, was trying to frame them basically in – in this you know the the other controversial rumor is that planned parenthood has an agenda to um euthanize and genocide the black race because a lot of young black women go in there for <laughs> abortions <laughs> and uh, that that the entire wow. organization is there uh like hitler to destroy the black race i mean these are the crazy things that people out there believe and think and repeat usually christians I, talk about well, yeah. talk off our cocoa puffs jesus yeah, it's 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 fucking insane, and and I live with this every day because I'm I you know I'm right down here in the Bible Belt. I'm surrounded by Christians, and I'm surrounded well, I mean, by you do Trump you do Holy. realize that the the Bible Belt has moved into the White House, right? I mean, that's kind of the that's whole the cabinet. <laughs> so let me just so they're defunding well, Planned Parenthood, but they're not getting rid of it altogether. They're just stopping some of the funding for it, correct? Here's where the major uh, thing that happened politically. You know, when Justice Scalia died, 
there's now this open seat uh, in the Supreme Court. And what's going to happen is Trump has stacked the deck with all Republicans. And before there was a checks and balances with our our uh, House of Representatives and with the <clears throat> Supreme Court. But now it all leads towards him. So anything he says goes. So in the past, it was really difficult to, you know, you know, for them to shut down things like Roe versus Wade and abortion and, and right. gay rights. But now the way that the deck is stacked in his favor, the Christians are in control, the Republicans are in control, and when these things come across his desk, this fucking dude hasn't been in office a couple of days and he's already signed some major documents that have withdrawn us from, you know, the, yeah, the, the transunion yeah. trans uh, uh, agreement, whatever, all, all this, kinds of shit. But yeah. whatever it is. Well, so, listen. We, before we go too far, before we, go, I, I want to yeah, get and I, turned I, into I hope Charlie Rose over here. Yeah, <laughs> I, hope, I hope this doesn't get <laughs> misconstrued as microaggression. But I wanted to get Nicole's uh, uh, take on this because you know, uh, Planned Parenthood, although it does help men, I believe it really affects women the most, as we could tell by uh, their outcry in these marches. So, Nicole, what do you, what do, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on it are that these Republicans and Christians keep saying that they don't want abortions, no abortions, don't kill babies, and yet they're trying to take away the very things that are going to prevent abortions. They're trying to take away like birth control and sex education and things that are going to empower people to be able to not have to put themselves in situations where they have to make that choice. And so I feel like they just kind of want it both ways, where they're mm -hmm. like, we don't want you to have an abortion, but we don't want you to have the the tools to to not need an abortion. So basically, just don't ever have sex ever. And well, yeah, you you, ha you have to remember that these are people who who number one, they don't think that you know like females should enjoy sex at all, and number two, yeah. um, they they yeah. think that it should only be for reproduction, well, and and you shouldn't, you know, it should be as simple as you should just be abstinent until you're married and ready to have a family. And they think it's just that cut and dried. Yeah, oh, yeah, like, they, yeah, like I don't know Greenridge what world they're living in, that. but it doesn't sound like very much fun to me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, one Basically. second. Uh, we just added to the call uh, Misty Tires, everyone. How you doing, Misty? Hey, what's up? Hey, Hello. Misty. <laughs> there, there's hey, a lot of sausage uh, fingers in here, so we just wanted to make sure there's w more women. Yeah, okay. another Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's another one? Yeah, Keith Ecker, I think, right? Uh, yeah. I think the problem is the way they have it set up is it's a lot like the death penalty. They think that if they take away a woman's options like abortion and birth control, then they will just choose abstinence and wait till marriage for sex. But that's not how it works. That's what I would do. So it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's like having the death penalty. Criminals aren't thinking about the death penalty when they're robbing a store and killing the clerk. Exactly. Uh, you know what no. I mean? So it's not a deterrent. Yeah, you're Agreed. absolutely right. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> well, then, prevent abortions, it just prevents safe abortions. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, so mm. so basically invest in coat hangers. But that's and, you know what I want to know is where well, that, are all these people who are just like mindlessly killing these six month pregnant babies that because most of the time if people get an abortion it's because they just found out they're pregnant and they don't want to have a baby or they can't deal yeah, with having it. a baby. Or if it's like a late term abortion, it's usually because the mother's life is in danger. And right. it's ridiculous that these people want to say that it's like, oh, well, you know, it should be in God's hands. It's like, no, if, if this mother is being killed by her unborn baby, then she needs to get an abortion. And what about, what about rape? Getting back to the uh, topic that you we started have... with, that this is why there was a march. So, you know, for everyone who said, yeah, what were they marching for? This is why. It's to make you aware. But you, that... Wait a minute, hold on. But you do, do have women um, or families, I'll say men and women, who, who do get pregnant and they can't decide and they wait until seven, eight months and even up until the point when they're having the baby and then have an abortion. I think, I think that's when it's wrong. It is when, when there's I mean, I, not legal you know, that I, that's, I disagree rare. with that at all, and I believe it's the woman's choice to decide when or not she has an abortion or not. I don't believe the government should step in. I don't believe other people should step in. That's the woman's choice. She's been carrying the baby, and I think if that's something that she wants to do, that's her ultimate choice no matter how late it is in the game. 
it's 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 a situation that they're in that we're not. And, you know, for the government to not even teach abstinence or try to defund mm-hmm. Planned Parenthood, it's just it's just a way to exert their control. And they want people to live a certain standard of life that they don't even adhere to themselves. That's, well, that's her body. Her right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm it, if it was up to me, they would allow abortions up till they're 18. Yeah. <laughs> and I go ahead and, and uh, interject real quick. I've let everyone else talk. <clears throat> My thing is, and this is what I, I've done research, you know, instead of uh, getting stuff from partisan sites and stuff like that, Trump would actually like to see uh, abortion go back to state rights, which is scary as fuck to me. Because, you know, if you live in Texas and you try to get an abortion in Texas, uh, you'll do better trying to get me to run a 15K, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I live in Kentucky and we're down to one abortion clinic in the entire state now. It's wow. crazy. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, what well, about women just... that get raped? You know what I mean? They, they, they don't want the no. child. so It's not an option. Oh, right, so, but wow. yeah, and again, when you're when you're dealing with people who are in, you know, basically they're kind of run more by their religious beliefs than they are by their political side of them. And you know, when it comes down to something like that, it's well, you know, it's it was all part of God's plan, and God ha- God has plans for that baby. You know, well, wasn't there oh. some uh, wasn't there a guy on TV or some government official or something a few years ago that was talking about that subject, and he said something about. Um, if it's not right, your body can shut it down. Yeah, right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It, you gotta I remember who that was. But... Rape, then, it, it, then your body it, has ways of shutting it down. I think it was Mitchell. That was Connell. a politician. I think it was Mitchell Connell. I, I remember the phrasing. I don't remember who it was. I think it was Mitch O'Connell that said it. He he said that it, if it was not a legitimate rape. Your body can shut it down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's oh, someone. Yeah. There's someone rape, who's. Rape, rape. There's dun, somebody dun, dun. who took cre- There's somebody that took creationism instead of science in fucking school, obviously. <laughs> well, that's okay. That that's a whole other situation. Now we've got somebody who Trump wants to put in charge of education, who's never had an actual public education. The children has never had yeah. public education, and she's a Christian and billionaire. Uh, I mean, good how is she going to be in charge of this? Good well, segue from me. Well, wait, now hold on a second. Hold on a second. We have right. had, we have not had a uh, person of education since the Reagan. Reagan is the one that instituted that. We never had that before, and our education system was just fine. Reagan is the one that instituted that, so we've only had it for the last 30, 40 years. So it's not something yeah, that we've like, always oh, so had. Oh, so you re- you remember your education before that? What are you talking about? No, I, I'm just saying we haven't had having a no, department of education. We've not had a department. department of education that's run by somebody who's totally incompetent, though. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Welcome to government. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's funny you bring up Dubois because she wants the provisions for the disabled in education to be removed. Yeah, that's uh, fucking bullshit. T- to me, that just screams uh, mental retardation. Stupidity. Yeah. We are literally living in the movie Idiocracy. I mean, it's actually <laughs> happening. Electrolytes. Yes. It's what plants uh, crave. The difference, <laughs> the difference is we don't, we don't have uh, Hector Nacho Camacho or whatever the fuck as a pheasant, but we have a pheasant that likes money. And lattes. <laughs> and, you know, he's trying to get rid of the EPA. You watch. He's going to start watering the White House lawn with Brondo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or he's going to I mean, spray it with, with whatever shit he puts in his hair to keep it so nice and, and firm. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I disagree with the idea that the Bible Belt has moved into the White House. The sentient Cheeto has moved into the White House. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. I, so, so I would many... actually feel safer with a sentient Cheeto. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, so uh... many uh, 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 people have predicted this over the years, and generally comedians, people like Bill Hicks and George Carlin, you know, oh, yeah. and George, yeah. George Carlin yeah. talked about, he said, 
I don't get mad at our politicians because our politicians are simply U.S. citizens who came out of our U.S. schools and our U.S. education system raised by United States parents. This is what you get, folks. This is the this is the world that we've made where the Kardashians are famous and Caitlyn Jenner is the number one news story and a reality yeah. star millionaire with his own board game is the president. This is yeah. what you get, and it's all of our faults. We have nobody to blame oh, yeah. ourselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. I you totally know, agree we, with that. It's, we, it's we, not if, Trump's if, fault that he is where he is because nobody stopped him. Yeah. No, somebody they, should have. In fact, you almost you have to almost you got to pat him on the him on the back. It's not even him that's the problem as much as the people that put him there and and the people who he's putting in place. He he, I think he's more interested. I think he thought when he got the job that he'd be made emperor of the universe. You know, he probably really believes that, you know, because, like, I don't think he has a clue what he's doing. No, 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 I, no, I think he really (laughs) does have a clue as to what he's doing. I think he's a very smart man. I think a lot of his stuff is a facade. I think he's incredibly smart. I think he's incredibly capable. And he's going to put the people that are going to, you know, cater and bow down to his will and, and his whim and to never be in politics and to be the president of the United States is unprecedented. And, you know, the Democrats did not bring a stronger candidate. If Hillary was the one that w- was supposed to happen, she should have brought a stronger campaign and her bullshit and her stuff made sure she didn't get elected either. So well, now we have more infighting more so than ever in our, our government. You know, the Republicans didn't want to support Obama or help get his plans. Now we have the same thing where the Democrats aren't, going to work with republicans that's what it boils down to we they created the monster and then wonder why the monster turns on them and bites them they created i think, I think the only reason I think really the only reason that trump is president is because so many people are fed up with politicians they're fed up with all of the empty promises and just the speeches that they constantly give and it's it's and by when they get elected, then none of it is fulfilled. It's just, I think people are fed up with it. So they were like, okay, let's go a different route and try a businessman. Somebody what? who's not been bought and paid for. Yeah, exactly. And so even it's, it's kind of like, around, it's kinda like it's, uh, you know what, I'm it, so sick of these it, damn pilots filing my 747. I want to get someone who doesn't know how to fucking fly. You know, I mean, <laughs> the logic behind but, it is ridiculous. You know, you got to understand, I mean, he is going to have advisors. He's going to have, you know, plenty of government officials around him to point him in the right direction and everything. It's just the final say is with him. And, and, and his, his, advisor, exactly, his, his advisors were on TV today saying, oh yeah, he uh, he believes that there was three to six million people who were uh, fraudulent voters, and even though there's no proof of it, we're going to back him up because he said we should. I mean, this, this is it's, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like Bush all over again. It's like Bush all over again. Yeah. It's the same I actually thing. have some hope for the administration in that I think that he was probably, this whole thing was a lark up until he actually won. Fool me once. Yeah. Uh, can I make an interjection? Yeah, go I'm, ahead. Go ahead. We're going to hear from Keith after uh, this because uh, I haven't uh, seen him hear anything. You know, we, we've got an administration, we've got all these people that don't call them lies anymore. It's alternative facts. Yeah. It's news <laughs> that was a dumb statement. Straight out of 1984, and no one that supports this guy is actually seeing a problem with this. Right, that's the scary part. I it think that so much stuff from me. Trump's regime you can point to in like some science fiction dystopian novel and be like, they warned us. And, yeah. <laughs> and yet here we are. You know, um, one yeah, of from Yeah, we have um, Doctor No I'm, I'm gonna go off on a rant here, if you guys yeah. don't mind. Go ahead, Robert. But it's uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not directed at anyone in this call. I swear, Scout's honor. Okay. Um, I, was, yeah. I didn't know you were a scout. <laughs> you guys have noticed. On uh, my news feed today, everyone is like, oh, great. The ACA is getting repealed and blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking and the Republicans are targeting Medicaid. Guess what's funded by Medicaid? Anyone want to take a guess here? People with disabilities? Yeah. <laughs> ding, ding, yeah, ding. I what do we have for him, Johnny? <laughs> 
Not enough for the car. Not enough for the car. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, my wheelchair repairs, which I kind of need because the back lateral has split on my uh, back and a couple of things with the seat need to be fixed. That's funded by Medicaid. So I got a now, question. They're actually, uh, okay. they're actually talking today that they're actually <laughs> hoping to have a system where people on ACA can actually keep it. But. If you don't want to be on it, you don't have to be. They're trying to. You know, that sounds good. But yeah. but the thing is, it's like they're targeting Medicaid, and uh, if Medicaid gets defunded and it reverts back to the state, well, my state is fucked because our previous governor uh, focused on you know diverted the state's attention to I'm gonna fight Obama, I'm gonna fight the ACA. And while he had everyone distracted, he kept cutting Medicaid. Yeah. Uh, the hmm. only reason I have 24-hour care at this point was the uh, hernia surgery that I had uh, a couple years ago. Because before that, I only had nine hours of help a day. And besides that, I was on my own. And, uh, you know, it scares me because it's like, oh, you're not going to be affected. You know, people are saying, oh, you deserve it. You're not going to be affected. <clears throat> like, the Repub <coughs> like the Republicans in Washington are just going to say, oh, fuck everyone else. Skip over the guy in a wheelchair in Louisiana. We'll leave him alone. He's cool. No, I'm fucked without loot. If they decide to do this, yeah, I think so we're we're the reasons for defunding it. Um, you I know, I, 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 well, they simply I, wanted to fuck with Robert Luthold. You know, I heard he got a hernia <laughs> just from lifting his huge dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could make money with my dick in a legal way, I'd be fine. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you're I, right. you know what? Yeah. <clears throat> one one yeah. second, guys. One Stories second. From uh, people uh, about yeah. like how they're, I don't even know. Like like ACA has inconvenienced them because they had to pay a little bit more for their insurance premium or whatever. And then you hear other stories from people who are like, yeah, it saved my life. I I just I I don't understand why people can't now, kind of uh, get behind that. Well, you know, I own my as own, an uh, outsider. You know, I, I've seen people say, well, my premiums have gone up to the point under the ACA where I can't afford to pay it. And the fact that uh, under the ACA, you're fined if you don't take their insurance, that screws a lot of people over, too. I yeah. understand that. I as, totally understand that. As a business owner, I cannot afford... Uh, health insurance because we're because i don't have paycheck stubs i can't verify my income and if i were to i would make too much and i wouldn't be able to afford it anyways for me to get health care it would be like around a thousand dollars a month for me which yeah. is something that i just can't afford so I, i'm in the exact same boat as you yeah and i have and diabetes. i can't even and i can't even offer it to my people that work with me either so that's a problem that i have and it's not and let's make sure that it's the Affordable Health Care Act, not Obamacare, because if it's Obamacare, it'd be for the feeding and caring of Obama. But that's, you know, that's not what it is. Uh, you know, it, well, and, call, and, and that's well, where and, and I, I think that's frustrated. one of the funniest things is, you got, is there are people out there who are like so glad that uh, I'm getting rid of that we're getting rid of Obamacare, and this, you know, the same guy is like, you know, I'm not against the ACA, I'm just against Obamacare, like not understanding Obama didn't want to call it that. Yeah, it's not yeah. it's not the care and feeding of Obama. It's yeah. you know the affordable there, care act. It's almost like some people use Obamacare as a slur. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Obama phone. Yeah. It is. <laughs> so now since Obama nation. Let's, uh, but, but I have the exact same issue one, as one other thing. I have here. to buy insulin from a from a drug dealer behind a McDonald's for my diabetes <laughs> because I don't have. I, I'm not shitting you. No, that's funny. Uh, I, I, it, I, buy, I buy my oh, medicine yeah. black market because my my insulin pins would be a hundred bucks a piece, which means that, you it, know. I, uh, so you you get your insulin off the dollar menu, just to be clear, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring the coupons. 
You know, I, yeah, I don't right. know where the guy's getting them. I'm not asking questions, but I can't afford health care. And I, I found a guy on Craigslist that sells like stolen insulin. I'm and, loving and that's it. how I live. That's not, it's, that's not okay. So, there, you know, let's just say that, that it's, it's sad when, you know, I'm for it caring for people that can afford it. I'm afford, uh, I'm for it caring for the disabled and people that really need it and Medicare and stuff like that. But there has to be a better way for us, like us that you can't even buy your insulin or me that I can't even afford it. That it should be something should be in place where everybody should be able to get health insurance. I think that's what the spirit of the Affordable Care Act was, but it, it, it really fell on its face in a lot of areas. And I, gonna, the biggest problem with it is that in order for it to work, everyone has to participate. And it doesn't work if a bunch of states fold their arms and say we're not going to, we're not going to be part of this. Then that means other people have to carry that burden. I well, think a lot of the problem with the Affordable Care Act is they had a good idea, but they used the wrong model for it. Like say it was Romney's. It was Romney's plan. If you if you go back to it, it was yeah. Romney's plan that he used in his state, and they just called it something else. Yeah, I got a question, guys. Uh, yeah. I mean, or, or uh, I wanted to hear from Keith because he he uh, hasn't I hasn't really spoken up yet. What is what? Yeah, your take no, on I wanted to chime in on this. Um, you know, I saw a post on our friend's wall. Um, you know what's been happening with the healthcare in the states and what's been passed and stuff like that. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm living in my socialized Canadian healthcare bubble, but it just the seems so all incredibly noise? messed up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, as Canadians as a whole, and I now there's another one in here, I can't really say that, but I mean, you know, we generally look down, roughly, on how the states run their healthcare. And now seeing all this new stuff being cut and things like that, it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was bad enough to begin with, and now you're going to make it worse by cutting, you know, this, that, and the other. It just, who's, it blew my mind. Who's yeah. recording at a dorm room? <laughs> yeah, please mute Sorry, your Sorry, that was me, Daddy. I had speaking. to take dinner out of the oven. <laughs> I, my ex-wife was a Canadian uh, citizen living in the United States, and she had a gallbladder attack. She got on an airplane, flew back home, and then got her gallbladder taken out in Canada because a $300 ticket was cheaper than the $6,000 bill they were going to give her here. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, Jesus. I mean, our health care isn't 100% perfect, no, but we still don't have to pay just to it's go not, into not the hospital. Perfect. Like, I remember one time yeah. I ended up going in because I needed to see the doctor to get my uh, script filled. I just randomly went into a merge, uh, but I forgot my uh, health card. So they ended up saying to me um, that you're going to have to pay uh, 500 just for coming in and then 500 for seeing the doctor unless you give us your health care uh, health card number within 30 days. And I was like, that's how much it actually costs? Holy crap. It's a, it's a bit different in British Columbia, though, where I'm at. We still have to pay, like, we have to pay... Like crazy monthly premiums and really, yeah, and it's yeah. it's not like if you don't have your um, MSP, which is medical services plan, uh -huh. um, you still <coughs> you still get um, get charged for going into places. Wow. So was it just Ontario that's like got the universal type thing, and then the rest of Canada just kind of trickles off? I'm. <laughs> Not sure about the other provinces. I know if it's like an absolute emergency, you can still go in, but I think they they still charge you for some things. Who invited well, all the Canucks? <laughs> <laughs> I know what's hey, the, what's this all about? We're bigger and we're on top. <laughs> if we were in prison, you guys would be our bitch. So oh, moving on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just what? I like to say that it's nice to have Misty on here without uh, her giving men boners right now. I don't I don't know about that. Speak about to that. yourself. Because <laughs> every time we hear, I, I get emails, I get all kinds of stuff saying that thank Satan for Misty's voice. So. <laughs> well, I was born with it. So. Yeah, well, that's a that's a little off putting to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you, I think um, I need an adult. <laughs> You won't find any of those here. 
<laughs> no, not no. at all. <laughs> no. So we, maybe, we like of, we were saying earlier... We're talking earlier. a lot of personal oh, sorry, stuff, but what about uh, maybe let's like the satanic perspective on, say, the uh, march that happened? Um, I mean... I was getting more coffee. I was not prepared for the question. What? No, um... I think I have something what is offer, that noise? Are you the whole show? Are you at the Wonka factory? What are you doing? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, from a satanic perspective, the uh, the walk. What I the mean, fuck is that? People choosing to do something that is bettering their own personal universe. That's how Here, I view that. Here's the thing. Listen, I was listening to the abortion thing, and it reminded me of of of, of this. Maybe since like like Mitchell said that um, you know some abortions if they're not meant to I mean some some uh, pregnancies if they're not meant to be will have a way of working themselves out so Trump is our abortion but we can't have them yet maybe maybe it'll just work itself out uh, well we should hope so I mean, well, yeah, the, yeah, worst case scenario is that he gets impeached and that we have a moral vice president uh, Pence that will take over for the remainder of it. Oh, so that'll I don't, be I don't horrible. Yeah, oh, I think yeah, I'd, I'd rather have worse. Trump. I'd rather yeah. have Trump, definitely. It yeah, sounds I'm like a Chuck E. Cheese too. in the background. What's going That's on? That's what I'm thinking. Who's... <laughs> Someone's making ever-laughing gobstoppers. Jeez. Keith, if you're not speaking, please <laughs> yeah. mute your no, mic. Um, so anyways, uh, no, uh, when I was listening yes. to the stuff about abortion, it actually reminded me of a YouTube video I watched. It was a top 10 uh, list of top 10 places that have the strictest abortion laws. And, you know, it was both uh, religious and political. And some of these places, I mean, if women were even to go um, get an abortion, they could be arrested or even think about it. And, wow. you know, anything like that, as well as if, even if it's um, an, uh, causing issues to her health, like if she will die, um, she still can't have an abortion. Now, fortunately, this and then I hear about how what's happening with the states, and I think about these other countries where this stuff's going on, and some of it's just in South America, you know, and it's crazy. And you know, you guys haven't gotten there yet, and hopefully, you guys never do. But um, yeah, that's what is going through my mind. It's like, wow. Well, listen, so, I want to. I want. Well, go ahead. Yeah, what's up? I was got well. Do you think I should mention the thing that happened recently that I called and told you about? Um, you know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about, but yeah, maybe at the right time, maybe. Uh, well, okay. Well, the, the, oh, okay. the reason I asked <laughs> no. about it was because uh, now I want to know what was being said. Well, the reason I was contacted was it was about um, <clears throat> the Med Medicaid state, this, doesn't cover your penis enlargement operation. Yeah, <laughs> but no, the, the the quote Satanists that were in Washington D.C. marching oh, kind of spurred right. spurred a a reporter to come knocking on doors. Mm. And I so, saw a post you know, about that. Well, this reporter wanted to interview all of the different Satanists, and uh, of course, went to the other pseudo groups. Oh and then, shit! Yeah, <laughs> and then reached out to oh, uh, Central, and uh, I received an you know amazing, uh, honorable text message from our Megas uh, Peter Gilmore, and he asked me if I would be willing to conduct the interview with the reporter. Nice. So I found that to be, uh, you know, I was a congrats. I, I thought that was amazing. You know, I really didn't expect that to happen. And he said, well, I think you would do a good job with this and I'd like to give you a shot. So I talked to the reporter for about an hour and she was asking some of the obvious questions. And I said, you know, I think one of the big differences between us and these other groups and really the core of our uh, philosophy is really, you know, not bothering other people. It's all about the pursuit of happiness. Say, being a Satanist is really being an American, really, because it's really in our constitution. Or Canadian. Pursuit. Or a Canadian, yeah. if you want. Hey. But, but, but North you know, American. You, you know, in both the Satanic philosophy and the American philosophy, it's all about our own personal pursuit of happiness. And we don't have the right to take away someone else's happiness. And I'm like, look, a Satanist just wouldn't, a real Satanist anyway, wouldn't bother marching as a Satanist with that agenda. The reason you don't see Church of Satan doing these type of things, because 
what would be the point? And, and why would I want to, you know, take something away from someone else and try to give it to myself? You know, so th- that's why you don't see the Church of Satan doing marches or protests, because what am I going to protest? You know, as long as you're not bothering me personally, I've got nothing to say about it. And it's right there in our tenets. And it's it's, you know, it, it's the core of who we are. So well, that's the whole thing. It's a personal thing. And so the Satanists that do choose to go out there, they're doing it of their personal thing because it is making them happy. They're doing a choice to make them happy within their own world. Yeah, I agree. It's it's the difference between you doing something because you want to versus I'm going to do this because I'm a Satanist and the Church of Satan is doing this, so I'm just going to kind of go along with it. Yes, because that would be like people that we shall not be named. Don't don't even dignify them with a... Yeah, no. (laughs) So, Robert Luthold, I I hear something brewing, and I don't know if it's your coffee or you. Uh, you, Do you have anything to say about that? (laughs) Uh, I actually have nothing to say for once. I heard <laughs> mine before this started. I think his drink is getting to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like sitting, listening, observing. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's let's switch gears. Let's get because this getting I'm getting depressed. I'm just gonna slice my wrist <laughs> a second ago. Um, what I heard something because I listen. I don't I don't really watch news at all. I don't. I I get my news from Circle of Jerks. So. Explain to me, guys. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, no, explain to me about this punching Nazi thing. What? I have no clue what happened. I haven't heard about that one. The, I don't. I, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was. He was basically. He was giving an interview, uh, and he is a. He's a racist. As far as like he has. Um, he he in his interview talked about um, how we could start genocide of the black race. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily Nazi, I, <laughs> but anyway, I, I um, he got the sucker punched in the, in the middle All of right. the interview. He got sucker punched and um, a whole lot of uh, more liberal people are, were saying, you know, yeah, you deserve that. That's what you get for saying that. And don't and, they always uh, do that kinda, sucker punch? They just well, get a sucker punch. Right? He's I mean, a guy named, uh, was, his name is Richard Spencer. He has a website called alt, right. And uh, he's been, you know, accused of being a Nazi. I don't know a whole lot about what he's done, but he was giving an interview. Someone stopped him for an interview, and some people recognized him. One of the protesters who had the face covered lunged at him, punched him in the head, and that's pretty much all it was. He really didn't get hurt that much, but everybody oh, was making. Uh, Wait, was this they were making TV? a big deal out of it? It wasn't yeah. on TV, but it was. It was well, passed around the I, internet. I can I can fill in the gaps if you'd like. With your dick? I, I've heard that about you. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Not, not I've seen the X-rays. I, I not tonight. I have a headache. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's okay because I just powdered my dick with aspirin. You can take it orally or at the spot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, go ahead. Go rare ahead. times on this segment, I'm gonna be serious. Shut up. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ooh. Uh, Richard Ooh. Spencer was giving Ooh. an interview for uh, uh, some kind of Australian news service, and this is the same guy that was, I forget whatever the fuck he was, but he was giving a speech saying, hail Trump, hail our people, and apparently this militant group, the Black Bloc, which is somewhat I guess kind of like Antifa. One of the guys decked him like right after he uh, was talking about Pepe the Frog, and then everyone on the TV saw him crying like a, l- a little bitch. So uh, you know, big bad racist, go him. I don't think that he should have been sucker punched, but some of the things that he said, like. Uh, Passive genocide where all non-Europeans should lead the country. You're going to get blowback from that. I'm not saying he should have been hit, but it happened. But he, he should expect it. I mean, yeah, he should have yeah. He should have uh, freedom of speech like anybody. However, yeah, when you're going to be that kind of personality, then you've got to expect some resentment so then- that's going to come at you. So exactly. let me see here. The guy that was spreading hate got a little hate thrown back, and now he's crying like a little girl. Oh, that's yep. interesting. Well, no, he was speaking hate. He got violently punched. The, oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think the reason. I don't. I don't think we should say little girl. I don't think we should say little girl. I think we should say a little little someone who identifies more as a woman today. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. He was a DC. deep curly man. So he was running. His, uh, he was. So he was running his mouth, and someone shut it for him, and now he's all upset about it. <laughs> well, actually, well, well, the... I think the reason that John brought this up was because there was some argument within our own the Church of Satan uh, yeah, forum well, about again... uh, about whether or not he should have been punched or not, or whether that's right. And no one has the right to physically attack someone just because they don't agree with them. No, no I no, exactly. yeah. Yeah, but you got to understand something about like if you're going to run your mouth, someone's going to come up and try to cash that check for you. So, I yeah. mean, yeah, I'm from that, that school. <laughs> yeah, be prepared. If you're going to talk the talk, then you better walk the walk. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you're going to. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely if you're right. Gonna, if you're going to put that's yourself what I was saying. out there. He doesn't have the right to hit him, but he should expect to get hit. Yeah, oh, exactly. And don't be surprised when you do get hit. So that's just yeah. kind of like. Keep it I think so. all it does is lead. Uh, it gives him fire for his argument that. Here you have exactly. one group of people that's acting yeah. civilly, and you got another I, group of people that he's against acting non civilly. I yeah, wouldn't, right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him that he staged the whole thing himself. Why? What a great way to. Do you bring think he's more Morton attention. Downey Jr.? I think. It, what a great way to to, to bring more no, attention to it, yourself. It, it, no, it, yeah. it, it's a possibility, you know. But hey, who knows? No such thing as bad press. Right. It would be more like Andy Kaufman and Jerry the King Lawler. Remember that. Oh, yes. yeah. Or more like Geraldo Rivera getting hit with the chair during the, what is it, the uh, Nazi and the and the yeah. white supremacists got into it? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Geraldo legitimately got hit by a chair. Morton Downey Jr. faked being beat up in a bathroom and drew a swatch on his head in a mirror, and he drew it backwards because he was in a mirror. That's where he I'm kicking up. my own <laughs> ass. Do you mind? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Maybe he was promoting I, peace. I personally <laughs> maybe the Nazi was dyslexic. Back. I had this very argument with someone talking about flag burning. You know, they were like, "Oh, flag burners should have their asses kicked." And you know, if I see somebody burning a flag, I'm going to kick their ass. And and I argued with them. I said, "Look, I, I'm di- I'm a patriot. I'm disgusted by someone who burned a flag, but I'm certainly not going to go over there." You know, every time they burn the flag, it's not like you personally are affected. Who gives a shit? It's their opinion, and just go home and watch TV and jerk off and leave them alone. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what other people do as long as they're fitting within our own tenets. You know, as long as do what thou wilt, though it harm none type of situation. Do whatever the fuck you want. If it's not hurting anybody but yourself, you know, if they buy a made in China polyester flag and burn it, as long as they're not breaking any fire laws and it's not your property, who gives a shit? And does yeah. this, does everyone agree that that, that, goes also then for uh, Madonna and uh, talking about blowing up the White House. Exactly. Yeah, that's what what I'm about this thing with Madonna. What happened with Madonna? Yeah. Well, with Madonna, she never even voiced intent. All right, she said exactly. I thought wait a minute. about it, but wait, I'm let's never do... gonna act on Hold on. It. I, but before we go into the Madonna thing, I got to mention this because if I say it later, it won't make sense. Um, Robert Mosley, you mentioned something about jerking off in television. I got to just say, I can't jerk off in front of the television because I feel like they can see me. They, well, they can't. Problem. Anyone they else can't. have that issue? <laughs> what you're watching? So you don't is, use porn at all? Then? Is it just me? Well, 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 hold on a second. Well, is, the thing, is the, the TV thing on is, or off? Is it just audio porn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, that's Where's Misty Tires. Is, is it a flat screen high def? <laughs> if the screen is off, then yes, that's bad because. Looking at yourself makes you come too fast, and yes, that would be a problem. <laughs> I don't know. Be- being able to jerk off or not, I guess it depends on what sort of home improvement projects you're doing. <laughs> Talking about respackling the wall there, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Madonna. Speaking of respackling. <laughs> She's a whore. Who cares? She's an old trout. I don't, I don't, needs a the, the issue with her is that, you know, making a threat up, upon a president is a federal crime, but I don't think that she. Uh, made a legitimate threat. Or, or what did she say? Just legitimate. to clear it up for everyone, including me, what did she All say? she said was, I thought about it, but I'm not going to act on it. Oh, okay, actually, no. actually, well, she, she, said, it, she actually it, even went further and said, I thought about it, but I know that it would do any good. Okay, now, she I didn't see the Americans here. Are her um, album sales down? Good. Is that why? Oh, yeah. Who cares about oh, Madonna's oh, album? Oh, yeah, that's, that's why. she got to bring some kind of... The last 20 years, who cared about a Madonna's she yeah. pulled a Sinead O'Connor. That's what she did. 
Asking the Americans here, <laughs> yeah. like, how many of you guys have thought, you know, negative things towards a president or towards your government? No comment. And right. maybe have said it. And the thing is, is that the only reason why she's getting so much attention is because she's a celebrity. Joe Blow says, I hate the president. Is she still, is she still a celebrity? Is she still yeah, she's trying. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, if Joe Blow says it, nobody cares. But, oh, Madonna says it. It's a big deal. I'll give you a good example. I got in trouble uh, four years ago when Obama was reelected because I was not an Obama fan. And I posted on my Facebook, I said, congratulations, uh, Obama. If you'd like to celebrate by uh, riding in a convertible through d- Dallas. My friend got me, he's like, you're, <laughs> you're in San Francisco. I said, look, I got a convertible. I'll drive myself right down Elm Street. <laughs> We can have a nice little picnic on the grassy knoll. Yeah. Oh, man. I caught some hell for that. So, oh, come on, man. I think people take things way too seriously. But serious if you weren't a celebrity, head. it wouldn't have. No. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Neither is she. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but your average Joe can't go on national television and speak their point either. So, I mean, I think that's the difference with her is yeah. it was heard everywhere by her exactly mm-hmm. that's the thing you know you say it in well, the comfort of it was your only heard it was heard members. everywhere because people thought it was a threat otherwise we wouldn't have cared well it's it's well, madonna I, saying cool. look at me that's all it is. Person, madonna, I, madonna is saying something right now and i'll never hear about it because i can give a shit you know if people actually take what madonna says seriously at this point in what's left that's, of her that's career then saying. that's pretty sad yeah exactly <laughs> She's got that song, Papa Don't Preach, has a new one. How about Madonna Don't Speak? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happened to our news and entertainment is is basically everything happens in little snippets and memes now. Yep. You know, it's not it's, like we, we used to have the three news channels. Now we have our, our news feed, Facebook and Twitter, and they come in little gifts or little memes. And this is like where we get our news, whether it's true or not. Well, yeah. that's, this that's is a good point. What's going on? News news is not about being right anymore. It's about who's reporting it first. They don't check the accuracy. They don't check that it's a real news story. All they're concerned about is who's first and who reported it first and how they can put their spin on it. That's all it boils down to. It's not about news anymore. It's about who can say it first and who's got the breaking story. Whether it's important or yeah. true or factual, it doesn't matter anymore. It's who does it first. And, and with what all sucks the news is media, for the American people. Well, what really sucks is because you have so much of that going on. Go ahead, on R2-D2. Every different... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, after... so much of that on every different channel, it, I, there's so much of everybody trying to clarify themselves, and then they look at the original <laughs> statement. Views. It's just a mess all the time. Domo arigato mita robato. <laughs> Lurkin, I don't know what's Aliens. up with the mic, man. The answer is I may uh, weigh in on this. Yes, yeah. go ahead. The problem is now, like with news in general, we have a president that shuts down legitimate news organizations like CNN by saying, oh, you're fake news, just because he doesn't agree with them. And that puts our freedom of the press, whether or not you agree with the bias, in jeopardy. Yeah. yeah. Hold a sec. Yeah, the the issue here is CNN now has to compete with the Huffington Post and the Onion, so they are starting to pull the same type of tactics, just like the picture of the empty inauguration at eight in the morning that everybody oh. made such a big deal out of. Oh so, yeah. Well, yeah. There was nobody there yet, and they still had to go through <laughs> security. You know. So in a way, they really do sometimes put out fake news. It's it's sort of like, if you're old enough to remember this, I think most of us are, when the OJ trial was happening, and yeah. Time magazine yeah. put the picture of OJ, except they darkened the picture to make him look more black. You know, these <laughs> news organizations <laughs> do well, the black are the more wow. evil. Yeah, I mean, but remember, we're talking about Time magazine, one of the most respected news magazines in the entire world, and here they did something... Uh, that everybody thought was, uh, you know, racially motivated ha- to create cool. an agenda to make him look more guilty. Well, that's like the thing with uh, Trayvon Martin. They only showed the picture of him when he was 13 years old. They didn't show the picture when he was 17 oh, okay. years old. And he was over six foot tall and he beat Zimmerman to a pulp. They didn't show what he really looked exactly. like. They showed his 13 year old picture. 
They found the like, cutest picture of the dude they could find, and, and Obama said, oh, this is just like one of my own sons, when in reality they didn't show, yeah, the six-foot-tall guy with the, with the hoodie that, you know, could kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, they didn't show that part. They just showed him like he was 13 years old. The media, since they can sensationalize it, and the media is – the news channels now make ratings and money. Before, they used to just report the news accurately, and now they have a, a, a way to – to, to make money off of it and sensationalize it and get ratings for their station. And that's what it's boiled down to. It's not about informing the people anymore. It's, well, it, you know, it's, it's, it's too polarized and it's too agenda that we don't get real news. For me to watch the news, I go to, like, uh, Canadian news stations. I go to the thank BBC. You. I go to other yeah. countries to get news about America because – they report it as it happens. They don't put a spin on it because they don't care because it's not their country. No good news it's is good, good news. Well, from a from a satanic perspective, it's really the good guy badge here at work. And you have you have news organizations trying to create good guys out of people that are up to no good. A perfect example of that was here in Texas, <laughs> uh, here in my own town. We had the little boy that made the clock that was a bomb. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, and the thing was clearly meant to look like a bomb, and it was it was clearly a prank that he tried to turn around, and there was all this conspiracy because his father is some sort of muckety muck Muslim, uh, you know, dude that that's in politics. I don't know the whole story about it, but you know they felt like the whole thing was staged in the first place. And here he's meeting the president and being told what a hero he is. It was the biggest bunch of bullshit. The kid totally made a prank bomb, and the media wanted to turn it around like it was some sort of Islamophobic uh, thing. When it really, you know, it, like another example of that that just happened was a guy that got thrown off a plane because he was speaking Arabic. But then when you do a little research, you find out that the guy runs a website where he does nothing but pranks, where he goes around pretending to be an Islamic terrorist, uh, you know, running up to people going, Allah Akbar, you know, like he's going to blow them up. It's a so find, yeah, so you find out that sometimes that there's a hidden agenda, and the, the, these media organizations are just trying to use this good guy badge to make uh, a, a hero out of this prankster because they're trying to make a feel good movement and at the same time vilify uh, everyone. You know, I, I don't know gotcha. why I'm gotcha. consumed yeah. by this. I, I, I drive it, it drives me crazy. I mean. <laughs> what I find with the news is, you know, the herd today likes everything sensationalized and everything in a sound bite. So if it's not, you know, a little in 140 characters, they don't care. <laughs> and so, yeah, gone are the days of actual news. And here are the days of, you know, what can we put out there that's going to get ratings? Yeah, because, because that's, that's what the herd at large Because wants. people nowadays have the attention span of a squirrel. So that's why they do everything so fast nowadays it's it's well, it, news stories come and go so fast it's unreal what yeah, seems to be the, the get in the way of a good story what <laughs> seems to be the mo of media these days is they take someone who has or take a group or whether, whether it's a like a religion or a race they'll take that group and try to reverse the stereotypical role i pointed this out to my wife i said you'll notice that in just about Every movie and TV show, there's a reversal of roles. Like, you won't see the burglar being black. You'll see a black cop and a white burglar. They've reversed these roles in almost every situation. And mm. I brought this up to her. I said, look, we're watching the show Lucifer, because why not? Love right? that show. I love, love that the show. show. <laughs> and I said, why is Lucifer a white Englishman, but his higher moral brother is a black guy? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. But the brother that comes down uh, to kill them is a white guy. So every yeah. time there's a bad guy, it's a white guy, good guy, black guy. And I'm like, listen, this isn't a racial thing. I'm not trying to, to, to you know say anything racial here but i'm just noticing this happening where these role reversals are happening well, constantly we and i'm like why what is here, this here's hurt, my take know? on it here's my take on that for so long for many many years in, in in films black people have been portrayed as the lower species they have been portrayed as the villains or the criminals and things like that so to do this is kind of it's you know to offset it i guess I, this might I, I, what i'm assuming but no but i understand that argument i know they don't like that it happened to them 
So I, I don't see the reason why they need to re roll reversal and make it happen to other people. But what else can they do? What what else can be done with that? You know, it's not only with black people from a satanic perspective, two wrongs don't make a right, in my opinion. I, this is that's my what I'm argument. It's a, it's a conundrum, but something has to happen, and we have to even out the playing field there, so that it's like you know, it's realized that criminals can be any color, you know, and all that. And, and so, of course, yeah. and and this is the argument that I always make when whenever the pseudo groups come up and the TST guys, I say, look, two wrongs aren't going to make a right. Putting your your poorly made version of Baphomet next to the Ten Commandments. That just means two assholes are on the lawn now and not <laughs> you know all, yeah. all you're proving is that you're just as bad as they are. Yeah. You know, being just yeah. as bad as they are isn't gonna solve anything. Well nobody and said I they think, were smart. <laughs> and yeah. and that's, that's the real difference and I think this is what I was trying to say in that article. And the way the way uh you know the way Armagus handles things in his interviews you know, he's so the dude is eloquent, he's so neutral. Yeah, he's eloquent. Even the way he texted me was just awesome. I mean, I, the way I read it, it was like something out of a storybook. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I had to show it to my wife. I go, look at the way this dude writes to me. I, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's an amazing warlock. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So listen, guys, we, we are at the one hour mark. I think uh, we should close up the show here so we don't have to blow our load in one show. We can have it. Uh, uh, you, know, guys, you guys come back. Did I say that? Uh, um, so let's get some final. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> the TV's on. Um, what the hell? <laughs> let's, uh, let's get some final thoughts from everyone. Let's just go right down the line and get, get a good final thought from everyone. Well, what will be the topic of our final thought? About just a kind of a summary or some kind of uh, thing you got. Going In conclusion, on. yeah, a little conclusion of uh, maybe some final thoughts that you might have had that you didn't get to say or something like that. Whatever, whatever it is, anything you you decide and begin. All right, who's going? <laughs> uh, let's go. Let's go with Nicole. Let's go with Nicole first. Anything? It feels like the, I feel like it's the Three Musketeers. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, anything to, uh, oh, to conclude wait. with? Uh, yeah, I just am really, really sick of hearing about all of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just wish that, that it would all just go away and everything could just be okay again. Well, I thank you we for coming did. on and making other people sick of hearing this stuff, too. So. Yeah, I know. But I'm like, I, I get on, you know, Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and it's all the same stuff over and over and over again. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it's just yeah. more of the same. Misty, anything? A lot, a lot of it just seems to be just manufacturing outrage. It's, it's yeah. kind of, it's the fashion to be angry and upset about something, and you're, you're. It seems like a lot of these people are. It's like their their self worth is just how how offended and angry they are, and it's kind of it's it's ridiculous. Excellent. Like Excellent. if you're not protesting or marching or yeah. screaming yeah. or crying or saying how happy. afraid they are, then it's like they're not doing anything. Ugh, because they're so important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go with uh, Keith. Anything. Yeah, no, um, it's funny because I tend to fall into that group that does follow everything on Facebook because personally, I don't watch the news at all because it's just, it's either misinformed or just depressing. So I don't follow it. And whatever I see on Facebook, it's like, if it's interesting, I see it or I just scroll by because most of it I don't care about, mostly because most of my friends are American. But other than that, <laughs> even with stuff that's posted here about <laughs> in Sault Ste. Marie, I'm just like, Okay, cool. It doesn't affect me. I don't personally care. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Uh, Lorcan, anything? Yeah, um, I think, honestly, people if, if people would just calm down and talk to one another on a, on a little bit more civil basis, it, it's easier to learn the, the root reasons why people feel the way they do about the issues. So most people want to just jump right on, on the, hey, fuck you. You know, you don't think how I do, so piss off. I'm going to delete you, block you, and all this shit. 
if I try and have conversations with people in order to learn more about where they're coming from, and then I, but I also want them to respect where I'm coming from. And I just think if people did more of that, then you'd find more common ground than division. Okay. All right. Patrick, anything? Uh, I just wanted to say that it's, uh, it's good that, that we have a forum like this for a group of intelligent, like-minded people can get together and discuss these things and express their opinions. And I think it's, uh, it's a good service that we provide for our fellow members that we can weigh in on these things and, and voice our opinions. And um, I just want to say thanks for letting me be a part of it. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. awesome. All right. Which Robert wants to go? <laughs> you guys usually fight over things, so I figured you might let's have fight a, over that. Let's have a measuring contest, and then we'll see who wins. <laughs> I may speak I when he says I can speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I am uh, not an animal. I am a human I, being. I forgot about that. <laughs> so, Robert, let's go Robert Luthold. What do you got? Anything? <clears throat> I have many things to say. Okay. The best things. Let me tell you. The big ones. Anyway, uh, I would definitely like to have um, make America sane again. And uh, I, for one, welcome the coming of Ragnarok, where everything will be burned away, and we will be the ones left standing. Nice. <laughs> or sitting. Or rolling. <laughs> right? No, you know what I mean? Oh, come on. It's high roll. <laughs> awesome very very cool all right robert mosley you know uh, I, I think that we are very fortunate as satanists because one of the great things about being a satanist is you get to learn who you are you know what your identity is and that's really what's missing from all of these people's lives they don't know who they are they're searching for identity they're searching for unity they want to be a part of something and I see this in the geek culture because I work in the geek culture making these movie props and, and I deal with these nerds and I go to these conventions and it's like so badly people want to, they want to be part of a minority. They want to be part of, you know, they want a pity party for themselves. And that's just what's going on uh, on a mass scale. And it's just really scary. I don't know if there's even hope <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry to say it, but as long as our culture keeps progressing this way with this, what I call anti-social media, um, it, you know, I think it's just going to get worse and we're just going to have to learn to live with it. I keep three guns nearby at all times. That's all. That's the only advice I have, uh, you know, <laughs> keep locked and loaded and look over your shoulder because, you know, I, I'm a white guy. And uh, I live in a black neighborhood, and they're looking at me funny all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, I personally put Trump in the White House. And you I'm did. Like, I, hey, did. I live here with you guys. I, no, I no, it was your fault. It. it was. You it, bastard. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I wish I had uh, uh, hope, but all I could say is, you know, y'all motherfuckers need Satan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, cool, man, cool. Dorian, any last uh, thoughts? Yeah, fuck all y'all. Gotta saw this thing. Isn't it past your bed? Isn't it past your bedtime? I saw it that is. auto shotgun you got. That thing is badass. <laughs> okay, no, cool. no final fight. Pretty fun. cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got three guns too. I agree. <laughs> All right, awesome. I let me let me just say this. Um, I think that as Satanists, we should be mindful of what we are and who we are. And revel, revel. I'm saying, uh, in the fact that we are on the outside of this, looking in, we can sit back and watch this ever evolving shit show, and and you know, take uh, a lot of uh, glee in the fact that we are not part of that. We choose to remain uh, our own gods and be our own gods and be responsible for our actions, unlike the herd out there. So I think that's very the important. Third side. Yeah, I the think it's very side. important, and. Uh, I uh, I actually do have something else to say. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Actually, it's not me, but my author ego. Lobert <laughs> Ruthold, everyone. Yeah, uh, this is Lobert Ruthold. 
Go Bear Rule Doll, I just want to say, I'm going to be running for the White House in four years. I'm going to be running that bitch, and I'm going to be putting Congress out on the street making my money. <laughs> Anyone that votes for me will be put on my payroll and be given all the liquor they want to drink. Who is typing a novel during You got this? me right there. Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So My yeah, bad. vote for me, make America pimp again. I'm running for boss pimp of the year awesome. for the next four years. Are you in blackface while you're doing this? <laughs> oh, all right, listen. Are you drunk? Listen, b- before we go, again? before we go, Raul Atundo has just joined us. Any final thoughts, Raul? <laughs> <laughs> Not to be on the spot or nothing, but hurry up. Raul. And he's gone. And he's gone. All right, no (laughs) thoughts. Listen, everyone, honestly, thank you so much for joining us. Um, And until next time, everyone, hail Satan. 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 Hail Satan.